Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion. It is Friday, October 25th, 2019. Still having issues with my computers and trying to do this screen capture software stuff. Absolutely mind-boggling. Uh, that's something I need to work on. Hopefully I've got a, at least a temporary solution here as I work on something as for a permanent fix. Uh, I don't want to waste too much time on it. I got people helping me, a lot of folks. You know, we talk about crowdfunding, people that support, you know, different creative ideas through money. Well, there's also the crowdfunding in terms of, you know, ingenuity and people lending their expertise. So lots of folks that follow my work are IT people and a lot of people helping me behind the scenes. It's a very complicated situation. Um, basically, Windows 10 not allowing most of my machines to do the screen capturing that I've been normally doing. And it all started on Monday, and we don't know why. So, and we're trying all kinds of things, you know, system restore, uh, whatever. So we're working on it. Hopefully this update worked. That's the bottom line. I'm trying to push, push these out to you. So let's keep our fingers crossed that when I hit stop right there, that it actually recorded the whole thing. All right, so let's get on with it. Enough of my problems. <laughs> In the tropics, things are still busy. We have a uh, tropical storm over here in the West Pacific, a tropical storm in the Arabian Sea, a soon-to-be tropical storm or subtropical storm probably in the easternmost portions of the Atlantic up here in the subtropics, and then tropical depression number 17 uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. And there we go. You can see that. It still says invest area, but it's TD-17. This is 98L. This is Tropical Storm Kyar. I think that's how you say it. And Tropical Storm, oh, I don't even know how you say that. But it's going to be off the coast of Japan and only an in interest for shipping lanes out there. In the Gulf of Mexico, as I tweeted about the other day, wouldn't be surprised if we saw something develop that was short-lived, so forth and so on. Turns out I was right about that, and, you know, it sounds like, oh, man, he's bragging. What's up with that? Part of that is true. Yes, I'm bragging about it, but here's why. The pattern suggested it, and the models also picked it up to some extent. You do this long enough, you can know in advance generally when something might happen. You never come out and say, ooh, it's going to happen, because you get burned. <laughs> That's why I said, wouldn't be surprised, instead of, I absolutely declare that we will have something develop in the Northwest Gulf. But nevertheless, here it is. The pattern foretold it, and the global models were picking up on a little impulse uh, originating from a tropical wave that made its way through the Caribbean, and now it's interacting with this frontal system and the energy coming in from Texas and elsewhere, and voila, we have TD number 17. Now, the impacts here are going to be mostly rain, as we can see, uh, highlighted in this product here from the Weather Service. And the rain won't be that much, you know, a few inches here and there. Widespread, though, meaning that it'll cover a good chunk of the Deep South, which is great, and not many other hazards. Maybe, maybe some onshore flow issues, i.e. storm surge, maybe just a little bit. And I'll talk about that in more detail in just a moment. The broader picture uh, highlighting the areas that we're looking at. Here's TD-17 over here. And this little tiny feature, that's 98L right there. Wait till I show you that, sort of zoomed in in just a moment. First, let's zoom in on the Gulf of Mexico. Here's our tropical depression. And it's got these north winds coming behind it. Drier, cooler air. And there's the tropical cyclone right there, the tropical depression. This is all the warm sector, rising air, very unstable. Some severe weather over here in parts of the Gulf Coast. Tornado watch is in effect for that region. I'll show you that in a moment. But it's really fascinating how this is interacting with this overall front that's coming through here. And it's going to merge with that and head off towards the Louisiana coastline as a post-tropical system. What does that mean for you guys along the coast over here and areas inland? It means impacts. That's the bottom line. Whatever you call this a depression, a gale center, tropical storm, tropical depression, I don't care. It's got impacts. It's bigger than you. That's the way to look at it. And, you know, that's a pretty sizable storm system. And had this been earlier in the season by a few weeks, 
this would probably be on its way to becoming a hurricane over the very warm waters of the Gulf. But as it is, we are late in the season. You do have these vigorous fronts coming in with a lot of energy associated with them, and that will scoop this system up and bring the center of it, which is right in here, and a little bit of convective activity with it. All of that will head up towards Louisiana, and then onshore flow up through this area could make the water levels rise one or two feet above normal conditions in the typical low-lying areas that would normally see such things. So if you live and work down there, you know about this already. Oh, there's a storm coming out of the Gulf. Could see some water rises. Uh, one thing I want to make sure you are aware of, anybody traveling along the I-10 corridor through here, roughly like this, you know, that goes across the Gulf Coast, be real careful. You know, lots of trucking interest through there commercial industries, you name it, travelers, all kinds of activity. Millions of people travel this area, and this is going to intersect that. All of this weather down here is going to intersect that, a major east-west interstate system. Then you've got your north-south systems that come out of uh, the region, and that's what it's all about. That's what I try to focus on at the end of the day is impact. And there you go, Tornado Watch flood watch down here in the deep south um, and this is a great starting point if you want to know what's happening in your area you go to weather.gov and if you know your maps and you know your geography you say hey I live in southeast Louisiana you simply click on southeast Louisiana you get the radar uh, tropical or total rainfall forecast from the tropical system severe weather risk I mean these are all available to you talk about crowdfunding the Weather Service is the largest crowdfunded weather, you know, service in the world. I mean, come on. And it's true. It sounds funny, but it's true. You get all the watches and warnings for the local area. Then you can start to click and you say, hey, I live west of New Orleans. What's happening? And then you drill down and you get all this very helpful information, including these uh, red areas under hazardous weather conditions. You can read them and you learn about what you need to know. And it doesn't take that long Check it out. I talk about this frequently. Weather.gov. We'll do the survey later. Uh, very helpful. So, actually, that is an old graphic. It was cached. There we go. That was from Nestor. So, check it out. Weather.gov. Very, very useful. Um, Alex tweeted this earlier. He's at Cyclonic Weather. Um, a lot of you might know him as Not Sparta. And let's see if I mouse over if it still says that. Da -da -da. Yep. Also known as Not Sparta. Weather enthusiast, especially for tropical weather, amateur web and Python programmer. I would say he's done a pretty good job as an amateur because this is from his site. And I like this. This is really neat. Look at that. That right there is Invest Area 98L inside of this larger cyclonic envelope sitting out over the northeast Atlantic. Let me go back over to the wide animation here from Levi's site, soon to be. Dr. Levi Cowan, can you guys believe that? We'll talk about that another day. Another talented programmer at Tropical Tidbits here. Um, this generation coming up, I'm telling you what, if I had all of their skills, I would be a billionaire. But story for another day. I like what I do, and I like being able to share their stuff. And that being said, look at that. That tiny, tiny little system, almost the size of just one of the Azores Islands, honestly, and then you go back over to Alex's tweet, and there it is. That's it, embedded inside that system there, the larger circulation of that storm system over marginally warm enough water, a little eye, tiny convective mass, CDO, central dense overcast as we call it. Meteorology is absolutely fascinating. Um, I want to go back to the Hurricane Center's homepage and refresh it and see if they have... Yep, they did. Bingo! There you go. Shower activity continues to become better uh, organized in association with a small scale, no kidding, we just saw that, low pressure area embedded within a larger extra tropical low, a few hundred miles southwest of the Azores. Advisories on a tropical or subtropical cyclone could be initiated later today, so forth and so on. Um, Meteo France will be issuing the high seas forecast. That's interesting. Um, so there you go. 80% chance this goes on to develop. I bet it becomes a name storm later today. And here, of course, is TD-17. 
Um, no watches or warnings in effect from the National Hurricane Center, so we don't have intermediate advisories. The next full advisory would be at 5, and maybe, just maybe, there's enough organization in here. I know that Recon just took off from Keesler is going to head down here and check this out. We might have two more named storms before the end of the day. It's just, you know, something for classifying things. It doesn't, it's, it's just interesting. And if you follow this stuff, I think you would agree. Uh, it's interesting. And some of it does have impacts there, as is the case with TD-17. Okay, fingers crossed that this update recorded. Um, it's been a real frustrating week with this software. And as long as I have a way to get these done on any machine while I fix my main machine, I, uh, whatever. Fingers crossed that this works. Um, been a real headache. So that's it for now. Um, computer problems notwithstanding, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I'll be around, and I'll be doing updates Saturday, Sunday, and beyond, etc., you know, the hurricane season is winding down. We're getting to the end of October, and I will start to focus more and more on lower 48 weather, winter storms, that kind of thing, and we will eventually transition into looking at patterns and indicators for next hurricane season, um, but it's not over. You know, once November 30th gets here, I don't just go away. There will be plenty going on, and I'll talk about that in the uh, coming weeks, so stay tuned. Until then, have a great weekend, and be careful out there if you're along the area where TD-17 and its remnants and whatnot are coming in. I need you around to look at future videos, especially once I solve this computer problem. All right, we can all celebrate together. Have a great rest of your afternoon. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you throughout the weekend.